Hello everyone, my name is Ola and I welcome you uh, to the panel about Zdzisław Bekszyński called Zdzisław Bekszyński When Art Becomes a Board Game. Um, together we will talk about this amazing Polish artist and how his work inspired our game Nightmore Cathedral, soon to be on GameFound and how it inspired not only um, how the art looks like, but also the design of the game. Our guests are uh, Dr. Jarosław Serafin, director of the Historical Museum in Sanok and head of the art section. Hello. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me here today. Thank you very much for joining us. And My our pleasure. And our second guest is our very own head of um, development, Błażej Kubacki, who is also a designer of a Nightmare Cathedral. Hello, Błażej. Hello. <laughs> so, hello, everyone. I think we can start. And for the uh, beginning, I have a very important question for you, Mr. Serafin, because I'm pretty sure that not everyone watching us is familiar with Zdzisław Bekszyński's work. I mean... Can you say a few words about uh, Bekszyński and his art and what about his painting uh, is so special? Uh, it's not an easy question, I must say. I know. At the very <laughs> Sorry. Beginning, you know, when you have to explain uh, shortly uh, the mm -hmm. phenomenon of, of, of Bekszyński's art, it's always difficult. I find it difficult because I think there are many, many things that attract people to Bekszyński. Mm -hmm. But maybe before we start with <clears throat> Bekszyński with his silhouette, maybe I should disagree with you just a little bit, because I think okay. most of us should know Bekszyński. At least that is my point of view, because uh, right. we are speaking about uh, probably one of the most famous Polish painters and modern mm -hmm. artists at all. And uh, recent years, maybe recent decade, decade uh, it's been a time of uh, impressive and incredible uh, success of Bekszyński. Mm -hmm. Not only in art, because when you follow, for example, auctions, you will see uh, how attractive for investors Bekszyński's art becomes right now, currently. So maybe currently... Okay, I'm sorry, now I'm uh, actually curious. Can you give us an example? Yes, I can give at least a few because uh, let's just give you a small brief about how it looks now. Three or far, four years ago, Bekszyński was usually sold for, let's say, 20,000 zlotys, 20, zlotys. And that was the price for the art. Uh, a year ago, one million zlotys was uh, uh, paid for one, one, one uh, painting. And some, some people started to say, say it... It will never repeat. Surely it was just once and probably it won't happen again. And after only a few months, two millions were paid for Bekszyński's art. So it means, you know, uh, nice. uh, probably, I don't know, sky is the limit. You, you, you'll never know. Is there any limit for that mm -hmm. art? And, um, and that is just one, one uh, example of uh, this incredible success of Bekszyński's art. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, um, but Maybe in general, I believe that at least 75% of Polish people should know Bekszyński currently. Sure. Uh, because of uh, movies that were recently released, because of some books, <laughs> impressive books uh, written lately, mm -hmm. because of those uh, incredible, incredible uh, auctions uh, that happened lately, but also because of some uh, exhibits. Uh, for example, for uh, like... Every single year, it is like 70,000 people visiting our museum, historical museum in Sanok. So it gives you the imagination on Bekszyński's popularity in Poland. Mm -hmm. But uh, not only Poland, but also all over the world, Bekszyński becomes famous, becomes very popular. Uh, a lot of uh, um, interesting and uh, famous figures uh, uh, is attracted to Bekszyński's art. Let's just give one example. Guillermo del Toro, famous mm -hmm. director, he's yeah, absolutely mad about Bekszyński. So we, we are speaking currently about a very famous and very popular uh, painter. We cannot obviously compare Bekszyński to Picasso or Dali, 
but uh, you know, as I said, sky's the limit. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Maybe in ten years it will grow uh, uh, to another level. So, so I think most of us should know Bekinski. And if someone doesn't know Bekinski and never heard about Bekinski, should 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 uh, check on instant. Should check for his paintings, for his works, and soon we'll find out why he's famous. And, and I'm uh, I'm totally agree with you. I mean, I'm a really big fan of Bekinski's work, and I think it's something out of this world. I mean, I don't think there is another painter who do simil something similar to what Bekinski was doing. And uh, as you said, I mean, guys, if you've never seen any of Zdzisław Bekinski art painting, just Google it. I mean, it's fabulous to just watch it. Watch it. Uh, but so, I'm sorry, Mr. Serafin, I got no, a little no, bit no, too no. excited. <laughs> Please continue. Interesting. And that is, that is the point, because you said you cannot compare Bekinski to anyone else. And I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why Bekinski is so so incredibly good, so 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 uh, so just so great. And uh, obviously, we should start by saying a few words on Bekinski's silhouette, I believe, because for some reason Bekinski is very popular and famous, and it has some connection with his biography. Unfortunately. Uh, uh, there has been some tragedies in his life and in mm -hmm. his family life, and uh, in spite of huge uh, tragedies, it attracts people to Bekinski's figure because, uh, first of all, his son, famous uh, radio journalist and uh, also translator, uh, had this uh, fatal fatal. I mean, he committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Uh, it happened just a year after uh, Bekinski's wife passed away. And then Bekinski, who was left on his own after only five another years, or six, not nearly six years, he was finally killed by a young boy. So all, everything together it gives you, you know, a very strong history. And all those circumstances, they make the history very mm, tragic, but also attractive to some people, unfortunately. And uh, comparing uh, those those events to Bekinski's uh, atmosphere of his works, it all gives you some some something. I, it's difficult to explain, but I mean the atmosphere that mm -hmm. surrounds Bekinski and Bekinski's family is very uh, very strong. But that's just one reason. But uh, me, I'd rather focus on his art, on his. Uh, um, uh, on his, um, I mean, features of his art. And probably I should start by calling Bekinski the most popular modern artist in Poland, or mm -hmm. surely the greatest painter when it comes to surrealism and something that's, let's, let's call it uh, fantasy painting, mm -hmm. okay? And, uh, but, but, it's just one side of Bekinski because, as we know, apart from painting, he was also very successful in artistic photography, in mm -hmm. sculpture, in drawing, in graphic, or even computer graphics. So he was like, he, we can call him uh, extremely ver versatile, extremely also prolific because uh, after his death, we've been given, we've been donated nearly 6,000 works of him. Yes. And that's just part of his legacy because we do know that there are other exhibitions, not only in Sanok, but also in Krakow, in Warsaw. Mm -hmm. There's huge uh, collection of Piotr Dmochowski as well. So mm -hmm. it's one side of this uh, uh, phenomenon, but there are some other things that I mean, that I think we should we should mention, we should underline when it comes to Bekinski and his, and his success. I mean, First of all, when you see the paintings, uh, you you know there are so, some admirers admirers of, in every single place uh, of globe, and then we do ask ourselves how it, how come why why do they love Bekinski? How, why is he so popular? And uh, when we see this, I mean, extraordinary potential of evoking emotions, something that makes mm -hmm. these paintings incredible, and you just cannot. Uh, say, okay, it's fine by me. You will hate it or love it. Either love it or hate it, and probably you will love it because of the atmosphere. 
and mm -hmm. uh, also uh, the, you will you will probably uh, you will probably ask some questions to yourself because it is something that yeah. uh, ev evokes some reflection. Uh, there is also one other thing. I think that the incredible technique or workshop yes. of Beksinski also matters. When we see the paintings, it's always like a huge dialogue with old masters of art. He, he was always in love with those great uh, giants of painting, of th those masters of Baroque painting. Uh, and so he tried to follow this this tradition. So it has nothing to do with this modern art, modern art as we know it, completely uh, completely free from technique, from workshops. So Baczynski is absolutely different. And there is one more thing, and I think that's the point. I think Baczynski's art is very authentic. There is no room for for any. Uh, for any faking, for any, uh, I mean, artificiality. It's mm -hmm. just like there are some so many visions. He left over 1,000 of oil paintings, and each one of them has some incredible vision that he was carrying in, in the bottom of his soul. Uh, he was saying sometimes that sometimes I'm just closing my eyes and those visions, they, they, mm -hmm. they appear at, on the instant. So, um, once you see them, you will you will see there's no room for faking and uh, believe it or not, but I think you can you can feel it. Yeah, totally. I mean, um, always when I'm looking myself, when I'm looking at Bakshinsky paintings, I have so many ideas and thoughts in my head. And as you yeah. said, it's like um, you're starting dialogue with yourself when watching them. And uh, by the way, we have a very uh, interesting question from our chat from our viewers. Um, when did his art really start to get appreciated? 70s, 80s, or even more after his death? And that's a, yeah, that's a good question. Because usually, when we speak about uh, famous paintings, we do realize that they became fa famous after their death. Uh, on the other hand, we have so many famous painters, very popular, maybe speaking of the words, painters, uh, during their life, during their career. So, so, so when they're gone, they are sometimes very quickly for, forgotten. Uh, and Bekszynski, he, he, was, he, he was very popular and he was uh, he, um, famous and his reputation was very high in, in the 50s, even in the 50s. Mm -hmm. So over uh, 50 years ago, over 60 years ago, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we have to say that his first steps in art, uh, these were the, those were the steps in uh, artistic photography. Because when he was very small, young boy, he was given a camera by his father, small uh, Igoretta, that was the name of the camera. And mm -hmm. he was just wandering uh, around and taking some photos of nature. Also later when the Second World War started, he was taking photos of German soldiers. It was nothing sensible, uh, but anyway, he was he was uh, brave. I don't know. He did not really realize what was going on. So <clears throat> he was following German soldiers and taking photos also of uh, German uh, tanks as well. And so uh, he uh, got the back of, of the photography. And so later, after graduating from, from, from high school, from university, uh, he started, um, started um, uh, his career as a photographer. And uh, in the second half of the uh, 50s, Beczynski belonged to the most famous, the best, the finest photographers in Poland. And mm -hmm. he was absolutely incredible in, in that branch of art. Uh, and so um, it was a big shock for uh, for uh, his friends and colleagues when he decided, uh, by the end of the 50s, he decided to quit from photography. He said uh, that he is no longer interested in photography and he does not really feel that photography makes an art. Hmm. So he, he wrote a letter to his friend, to, to Jerzy Lewczyński, another famous photographer, and he asked him to provide him with, with some, some um, tools to paint, so brushes and mm -hmm. paint as well. And he, he declared him that he, 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 would, he would like to become a famous painter. 
and uh, he that was a huge shock for some people that he he's quitting with photography but after only a few years he uh, he uh, became famous also as a um, abstract art that was the, definitely the, the moment of abstract art and once again when in 1964 he was uh, he was in sorry in 1960 he mm -hmm. was offered a grant in New York by Mr. James, uh, John James Sweeney, uh, then director of uh, Guggenheim Museum. He mm -hmm. was absolutely impressed with Bekshinsky's art, so he wanted to, to invite him to New York. And once again, Bekshinsky surprised everyone because he, he uh, refused the offer. He said he's no longer uh, into abstract, he, he's once again, he, he'd, he'd like to seek for something else. And so he uh, remained in Poland, did not go, did not take the chance. And some people uh, probably does not really um, uh, know what kind of offer that was in late 50s or in the uh, in early 60s in communistic state, when there was nothing, there was no chance of making huge international career. But Bekinski uh, uh, did not take the chance. He, he remained in Poland. And after only a few years, he started something that would later bring him a fame. I mean, this yeah. fantasy period in his art. So, so very long and very unobvious way to, to, to fame and to mm -hmm. this reputation, final reputation. But everything was done with some purpose, I believe. Mm -hmm. But... It's actually interesting because I believe at the end of his life, maybe not exactly at the end, but many, many years later, he actually, I believe, gave up painting and he get back to the photography, right? He, at the end of his life, he was life, he was mostly focused on photography and photo manipulations, if I recall correctly. In some way, yes, you're right, in some way, because he never really quit mm -hmm. with painting, never. But we have to remember that Bekinski was uh, in um, the late 90s, he was really old. I mean, he yeah, had some problems yeah. with spine. He could not really cope mm -hmm. with standing for 14 hours daily and painting. And so, so he uh, reduced his painting work, surely. Mm -hmm. And yes, you're absolutely right. And that's another strange, strange episode of his career. He's in his 70s. He's getting absolutely fascinated with computers. So he's buying so lots of bo books and he's learning a lot about programs, about, about uh, manipulating with computer graphics. And he's starting with this branch of art. Incredible because, and that's something that, <clears throat> I mean, that shows uh, the personality of Bekinski. Yes. Once he started something, he wanted to be as good as possible and wanted to go as deep as possible. Uh, so <clears> so that, that happened also with computer graphics and with photography as well. So yeah, so it was strange and long way. But anyway, I mean, the photography was surely the most uh, important, the most uh, uh, significant branch of art by Wyczynski. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was so versatile person. I mean, he was a painter. He was a photographer, an architect, I believe. He also yeah. was doing uh, sculptures. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And uh, we have another question uh, from people who are watching us right now. Uh, what was his inspiration for painting the cathedral? The one will be uh, on the cover of our, um, our board game, but he also was painting cathedrals in general. I believe there are a lot of paintings of that type of building in Bekshinsky's work, right? Uh, yeah, of course. There are, I mean, there are few uh, repeatable motifs of his art. Um, it's easy to see that there are so many crosses in his paintings, for example, which is pretty strange because as we know, Bekshinsky was not really a religious type. Yes. Uh, but for some reason, a cross uh, attracted him a lot, and he never wanted to offend anyone. It was not an easy way to attract the audience, nothing at all. But but uh, crosses are repeatable for decades in his art. 
The other mm -hmm. motif, very popular and probably the most favorite uh, motif of Bekinski's art is head. Not necessarily human head, because we cannot call it mm -hmm. human head, but maybe humanoid head, something of that kind. And uh, that kind of head uh, often was a starting motif, but it was mm -hmm. uh, turning into cathedral or into tree or into something completely different uh, during the, the process. And the other and uh, motif, obviously favorite motif, is the motif of cathedral. Obviously, in his art, we have we 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 know at least I don't know dozen of cathedrals. Uh, they are obviously now uh, real cathedrals. They do not follow normal, regular buildings. Uh, they have, uh, they are modified, they are degraded, they often are uh, constructed from this uh, mm -hmm. bony structures. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, mm, uh, anyway, we have to remember one thing. Bekinski was an architect and yes. he graduated from, from architecture. He did not really want to, to study the architecture, but his father decided for him mm -hmm. that he needs to follow the family tradition. His grandfather, Władysław Bekszyński, was a famous uh, architect and main architect of the uh, uh, town of Sanok. Uh, his father was also... Uh, 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 um, actually, he was not a professional architect, but he was, was pretty close to mm -hmm. architecture. So, um, so they wanted him. Actually, the father wanted him to follow the family tradition, and something from that uh, period remained. I mean, the fascination with the architecture showed, him. and um, Bekinski was absolutely uh, fascinated with the Gothic architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, in 80s and 90s, when when uh, his wife bought, when they together with his, his wife bought a car and then another car, they were often making some trips uh, along the Poland and they were visiting many sometimes unobvious places. And he always wanted to see those old uh, Gothic cathedrals or some remains of old buildings. So uh, obviously. He had some strong fascination with this motive. But when we speak about inspirations, it's always difficult because, mm -hmm. because we have to remember Bekszynski, he was not really keen on uh, saying about his inspirations. It was difficult because most of he said he always he was always saying the motive or the subject of painting is secondary, on secondary place. It's on second place, it does not really matter. What matters the most is the atmosphere of the painting. So he wanted uh, the viewers to watch, to, 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 um, to experience the painting mm -hmm. the same way that he did with those uh, finals of uh, great uh, um, philharmonic uh, um, um, pieces like Mahler's mm -hmm. uh, pieces or uh, Shostakovich pieces. So it was all about the atmosphere, in fact. So it was about the spiritual experience more oh, yeah. than anything yeah. else. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly, yes. Okay, so we talk a little bit about Zdzisław Bekszyński, and obviously we will get back to him. It won't be that easy. Uh, but for a moment, let's go and talk a little bit about a board game, about Nightmare Cathedral. And I have a few questions for you, Boise, as you're a lead designer for the project. Uh, please share with us how actually Zdzisław Bekszyński's art inspired you in your work in designing the board game. So one of the main uh, motives I wanted to put into the game was something that at least I believe appears in many of Bekszyński's work. And this is the mutability. When we look at many of his images, we see that and I think it was already discussed that there is often one thing that kind of changes or mutates, or as you look at it, it's also another thing, that we can see um, a head that at the same time is a city. So yeah. one of the things that I started thinking of, one of my first thoughts was how I could actually create this sense 
that certain elements of the game are also other elements of the game. Now, when we look at many traditional games, and to take maybe a step back, Nightmare Cathedral is a game that at first glance is a bit of a dudes on the map game. So we have a map, we have certain regions on that map, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to try to control them. We're going to try to conquer them. Although there is more, and I guess we will be able to reveal more as we speak. So having this idea, um, how to create this sense that certain elements are more than they, than they are at first glance. And towards this, I took a look at the followers. So as in many games of similar type, we have some sort of a basic unit, a basic representation of, our, of us on the board. And in this case, in this game, they are called followers. Followers are, their primary function is to exert our control over the board. And due to that, they are, of course, what you would most often see as units in other games. You are allowed to move with them around the board, take new areas, but then they become something more. Because when you are trying to expand your control over the board, they become also the primary resource for your forts. And forts are um, maybe not primary, but the best way to exert control over specific areas, over those specific realms. To do that, you have to spend them in order to build those forts. And then later, those forts will allow you to, again, create more followers. So there is kind of a cycle of one thing becoming another thing. At the same time, the followers are also a very important resource for what is called the ritual track. And the ritual track is a way, is one of the ways to kind of uh, maybe not secure your victory, but to be sure that you will get a lot of points in the game. So that can be a very important, very big element of your victory in the game. And one of the ideas here was maybe not exactly an image. It started with an image. It started with a series of images. But the idea behind many of them, that we have one thing that becomes another thing as we look at it. And this is something I wanted to put inside the game mechanisms so that you could feel um, this atmosphere. But on the other hand, also to create some interesting decisions within the game. Because again, if you look at it from, from the game perspective, you will see that you have one very limited resource that serves many purposes, mm -hmm. and that creates a space for interesting and meaningful decisions. How I want to spend this resource, what I want it primarily to be. Mm -hmm. Is this the moment to exert more control? Or maybe this is the moment which will allow me to make this leap towards victory. This is how something that I believe appears in many of those images, and a game mechanism come together to create something that is, I believe, interesting and unique within the game. Okay, and what about the cathedral? What about the cathedral? So, um, yes, the cathedral is, and I'm slightly afraid of being somewhat cliche here, but the cathedral itself is and always has been one of my favorite images, um, one of my favorite works by uh, Zdzisław Bekszynski. And I knew also from the start that I wanted the cathedral to be an important part of the game. I wanted it um, as, as no pun intended, a centerpiece of the game. <laughs> And this is what happened in the end. The cathedral itself is an image that works on me in many ways, and I definitely wanted it to be um, something that... Because the cathedral itself is something, I believe, very relatable, but at the same time very alien. And this is the reason why it makes such an impression on me. It is a shape that is well known to anyone who was uh, raised in, let's say, the western part of the world. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, its, it's shape and the way it seems to be something that is growing 
um, creates also a feeling of something that is somewhat alien or strange. And towards that, the cathedral itself is a prominent element of the game, and it will be growing as we uh, as we play the game. And it kind of it is not built using resources because when you look at the image of the cathedral, it looks like something that grows, not something that was built, which is exactly what's going to be happening during the game. As the game progresses, inevitably the cathedral will grow until it has its full shape, and then comes one big change to the game, um, to, to, to gameplay, and the game changes, and the way we look at everything changes, mm -hmm. which again feeds into one thing becoming another thing uh, in the game. Thank you very much. And by the way, we have um, another question which you, on, you actually partial, partially answered, but there is a part of this question that I would like to follow. What was the process of creating this game? And I actually wanted to ask you if the final idea is very different, different from the first one. Maybe you had some other ideas for this game which never, never go to, into fruition, how, how, it was, how, it was, how, how it was changing? Well, mechanically, there were many changes. Uh, there were some ideas that basically matured into something that's different. And uh, when it comes to this, it's more of a matter of game design and development than anything else. But the important thing is that the elements that inspired me to design the game, none of them were ever cut out they may have been changed inside mm -hmm. the game, the exact, um, the exact workings of these elements or their representation in the game, but none of the ideas that were there when I started on this road were ever removed from the game or were ever dropped in any way. Mm -hmm. So um, basically the things that inspired me the most, so again, the cathedral itself and the idea of this, of this change shown on so many... Uh, works of Bekshinsky was always there throughout the whole process. Thank you. And, well, I have a question to you, Mr. Serafin. I mean, what... I believe many companies reached to the muse museum about Bekshinsky's work. How do... What do you thought when you hear that we want to make a board game out of it? Oh, initially, surely I was uh, I was surprised. Mm -hmm. I was surprised, um, and uh, you know, I have to confess that I also uh, that I was also a bit afraid of mm -hmm. how would it look like. It's yeah. very. My first thought was that it must have it, mu it must be very challenging to uh, to translate uh, the language of Bekshinsky's art into the mechanism of, of, of board game. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't really imagine how would it look like. Lately, uh, Mr. Kuba Polkowski uh, visited mm -hmm. me in Sanok and uh, showed me everything, explained me all the mechanisms of game. And I must say, I find it really uh, engaging, mm -hmm. really interesting. I believe it, it may bring a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of great fun. But uh, what's maybe even more important, uh, at least for us, it's that the game was designed and executed. All the elements, they were executed with great taste and mm -hmm. maybe even more important thing, with great respect to Bekshinsky's art. <clears throat> it was not, nothing easy to, 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 to design those small figures um, uh, so that they will uh, will correspond with Bekinsky's art, that they will have this level of art nicely, huge, really high level of art. And you've done a great job, I must say. And Thank you. I owe you congratulations and uh, to, to all the crew of Bod and Dice, because uh, not only me, but I also uh, invited a few, few uh, uh, colleagues who, who, who mm -hmm. work every single day with Bekinsky's art and all of them they were impressed and they said yes it, it's something yeah so I, I I mean you know all those doubts that I had they are gone mm -hmm. and it will be a great great success and obviously I hope 
it'll also help to promote Bikinski's art all, all over the world. And actually about that, we have a question. Um, could the game be edu educational in, an, in a way, perhaps as an interactive way to bring the artwork to life in a new form? And this is actually the question for both of you gentlemen. Um, I actually think that um, it is a new way to present Bekshinsky's art in that form. And what do you worry, think about it? Well, um, from my perspective, this is this is definitely a way to to do something very original and to bring some people in who um, may have still may have still not really interacted with Bekshinsky's art or who may have interacted with it a little bit but didn't notice or didn't register who uh, the person who created this specific art was because I believe it's um, it's quite easy to see something that is either Bekshinsky or strongly influenced by him, but it's also quite easy to kind of miss the source of this, miss the person behind the art, the artist behind the art. So I think that in this sense, um, as, a, as perhaps people who are fascinated with art and people who are fascinated with board games are two groups with, I believe, a lot of common a lot of people who are kind of in this uh, in in this group that are both fascinated in art and fascinated in board games after all board games some of them at least are known for their great looking engaging interesting art so there is a certain overlap but i still believe that there are people from outside this group people are only interested in board in board games who will get introduced to bekshinsky's art through um, Nightmare Cathedral, and uh, as was mentioned a moment ago, our art team put an incredible amount of effort to show this art with respect. We all kind of worked also on certain details, like for example, making sure that uh, all of the elements of the game that feature the images are big enough so that you can yeah. actually see the image and that you can actually uh, at least begin to appreciate it. So that was also very important. And that was something that we had in mind from the moment we started designing the game. So from the first steps, one of the things was how to make a game that will also feature, that will also be able to prominently feature this art. So we made sure that, for example, the cards which show the images are big enough to both have a lot of maybe a lot of text or to comfortably fit a certain amount of text, but also to comfortably fit the image they are presenting. And the images used on the board, again, we wanted to make sure that it's also mechanically not a problem to have those images big enough to give them at least a measure of justice. And how does it look like from museum perspective? Is it a new interesting way to show Bekshinsky paintings? First of all, I, 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 I must agree. I totally agree with Mr. Baje and absolutely I think it will it will uh, be another attractive way to, to, to capture some new new fans. Uh, but you know me myself i do not like really to stick to to, to only to conventional ways mm -hmm. obviously we as a museum we are mainly responsible for preparing exhibitions for uh, releasing albums and uh, that kind of work but uh, there are some other ways to, um, to 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 reach reach out for new fans and for example lately uh, we've uh, we have collaborated with two uh, huge mm -hmm. uh, clothing brands, one domestic and old, and another was a Japanese designer. Wow. Uh, yes, y Yoji Yamamoto, very famous in mm -hmm. Japan. And just only three weeks ago, I believe, uh, the, the collection had its premiere on, on the catwalks of Tokyo, mm -hmm. uh, Bekshinsky's collection. So it's completely unconventional, and I believe it will uh, only uh, it will only help to promote mm -hmm. that, and uh, that's our business and that's uh, our main purpose. Because the more Bekshinsky is known, 
the Butterfly Museum, the Butterfly Polish Art, because we uh, do realize that we have we have uh, we have uh, special uh, and incredible artists to promote, and we cannot only stick to conventional uh, conventional ways. And I believe, besides a fashion, a clo designing clothes and a board game, there were other companies who were reaching to the museum, right? I believe I saw somewhere um, like a metal album with Bekshinsky's art. There were oh, some, yeah. yeah, there were some uh, video games in the past inspired by Bekshinsky art. There are dozens of products of that type, and actually, uh, we have been recipient of, of those offers. Mm -hmm. um, for years and uh, every single week there are few few offers of that type. Uh, I don't know why actually only not only but mainly metal bands are attracted to Bekszynski, but that's true. Uh, there are some other, of course. There's mm -hmm. there's a number of rock bands or uh, alternative mm -hmm. music, uh, and uh, sometimes yes, we do uh, let the license for mm -hmm. for example a yeah, cover of album. Uh, so, so it also helps us to promote Bekinski, but we need to be really careful because you know it's easy to to let the license to someone who should not get that get that, and it's all about the quality and all about some some also other elements. We as a, the historical museum in Sanok, we are responsible for a good promotion of Bekinski. Yeah. We do, uh, we have to. Uh, keep in our mind uh, all those things that Bekinski wanted us to mm -hmm. secure. Uh, my uh, great uh, uh, former the former director, Mr. Mm -hmm. Kieslow Panak, Panak, he was a friend of Bekinski, and they mm -hmm. were um, they they had this great relationship for uh, over forty years, I believe. Wow. Yes, forty years at least. And so nearly 40 years, nearly 40 years. And, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he knew Bekinski by heart. He knew mm -hmm. so much about him. And so I sometimes ask him for, for, for advice, whether it's good to, to collaborate with something like, you know, metal band. And we try to avoid collaboration with, I don't know, death metal bands and some other occult bands. Because, you know, even though Bekinski's art may... I have this impression of all mm -hmm. of, of that kind of you know stuff. So, but but anyway, Bekinski he always wanted to. He was not interested to, to uh, you know those kind of associations. That was nothing that he would like to have. Mm -hmm. Also, so it's always you know it's not that easy to 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 make to um, I mean to run the business with Bekinski's mm -hmm. life. Yes, but there are so many, so so many strange uh, offers. Sometimes they are bizarre. Like for example, uh, some some company uh, wanted to to produce produ produce uh, face masks. I don't think it's nice. I don't think it's moral. Yeah. I'm so sorry. It's wow. On instant, yes, yes. And there are so many different. You know, unfortunately, there are regions in the world, like for example, uh, Russia. Where, uh, where uh, justice has, where we cannot have any legal actions. Actually, there, mm -hmm. there's no chance of, of uh, legal action in Russia. And we found, uh, for example, tarot cards or oh, okay. uh, some other stuff that we wouldn't like to have. So, so yeah, that's how it looks. You know, when we was able to. Um have access to Bekszynski's painting with your blessings. We were so extremely happy because there are a lot of Bekszynski fun in our company and we were super excited. I'm really, um, I really regret that uh, our uh, lead graphic designer cannot come here today because of health reasons, but he was so excited that he could talk to you. He was very humbled when he could work with Bekszynski's art. And as what I said, we really, Mm, really thought this through how to show Bakshinsky's work as best we could. I mean, you know, it's not really a big job to uh, show amazing art, but still to give it justice, uh, it was hard. But I think I, believe, I think I bet it was. I bet it was, and that's why we feel 
Mm, the the deci decision was good because you know the final effect was really wow, and it means a lot to us because uh, I cannot <laughs> I cannot um, I have to admit you know there was some there were some second thoughts. How would it mm -hmm. look like? How would it look like? What's the reception of the product? Final reception, but. Now I'm really, I'm totally calm and I feel uh, you've done a great job. And as I said before, huge congratulations. To, 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 thank to, you. Thank to you so team. much. We are very, very happy to hear that, actually. Uh, by the way, Błażej, about that, I believe there were some challenges during the designing process, right? Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, apart from the obvious challenges of designing any board game, and in this sense, it is sometimes finding the, the right answers to certain problems that appear as the game is designed and developed. I think that um, what's the most interesting here, kind of in this case, is in the end trying to translate what is a very visual, um, a very visual type of art into a game and into uh, the game itself. It's, um, I think that one of the, that one of the biggest things here is that art and especially Bekshinsky's mm -hmm. art can be something that works in many, in very many ways. And uh, people will often, although we have certain, a certain commonality of experiences that often will make this art resonate with us, it's not always exactly the same way um, it will resonate. As in, there are some images or some ideas that are very common. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they are very common and the fact that they can be easily found, and again, that they are also common to us, to our human experience, they will, in the end, this, these experiences will be different. A thing that fascinates one person might be a thing that scares another person. And yet there might be a third person who is both slightly scared and fascinated at the same time. So taking all of that and putting it into a board game, a medium that is also partly a visual medium, but in many ways the visuals may stand in the background and as long as they don't come in the way of the game, they do not have to be the centerpiece of the game. This was something that was probably the most difficult thing on the, on the level of concept of the game itself. In the end, we had to make choices, and this is, this is what it boils down to. And we had to make choices which were... Um, which were kind of, we would have to choose a route, one of the ways, basically. But we also had one interesting choice that stood there when we were working on the game, which is, who is this game for, exactly? And again, we knew that we will be kind of mostly speaking to, well, two groups of people. One group of people will be the people who are already gamers, who may have come in contact with Bekshinsky's work, but at the same time, it's quite possible that um, they have not, or that this contact was very, let's say, superficial. What I mentioned um, a little earlier by saying that maybe they came into contact that something that was Bekshinsky or was Bekshinsky influenced, but they didn't know the artist behind the art. On the other hand, we have a group of people who are, uh, who know the art of Zdzisław Bekszyński, but may not be heavy gamers or may not be gamers at all. How do we kind of make these two groups meet? Where, where do we put the heft of the game? Where do we put the complexity? What kind of a game this should be so that it will not be for absolutely everyone? Because there is no product, no art, no game, no book, no movie, no... Um, work of art that can be mm -hmm. for everyone absolutely but and this is a decision that we have to make where do, do we kind of put the boundaries to speak to as many people as we can and in the end this is maybe not a fascinating tale 
because it is a tale of um, of basically everyday work and repetition and fine tuning to to find this this group of people that we would be able to speak to. And I think that in the end, this is where we are at this time. That this is a game that is in a way solid and varied and interesting enough to pull in the people who are gamers and maybe don't know Bekshinsky that well, but will get a chance to interact with his art, as well as pulling in people who may not be heavy gamers, who may have little experience with gaming, but in itself, the game presents certain mechanism that mechanisms that are very common and that are often common to, and that are known through games that are not known as designer board games. So basically, one of the, one of the games everybody seems to know is Risk. And at first glance, when you look at, at Nightmare Cathedral, you'll see that there are bits and pieces mm -hmm. of what I would call Risk DNA in there. You have a map, that map is divided into regions, and you have little people on that map, and you'll be moving them around, and you'll be trying to claim those regions. So it's something that creates kind of this first step for people who may have had um, little contact with board games or who may have had the contact with the board games that a lot of us either already know from mo mostly toy stores, not specialist stores, or for people who knew those at the end of the 90s, in the beginning of 2000s, who knew those, um, those games in the past. So basically, we tried to take those two things, put them in one game in a way so that it would call out to different types of gamers, different types of players, and people who are not really gamers, but are on their way to be, hopefully, with Nightmare Cathedral. Hopefully. Thank you very much, Bozhai. Uh, I must say, I actually, um, even I didn't work exactly on a game. I'm not a designer. I'm not a graphic designer. I still are, learn a few things about Bekshinsky during the process. For example, I learned that Bekshinsky never gave titles to his paintings. Is that true? Yes, that is a true. Actually, <laughs> speaking precisely, Initially, he, he titled, he named his works for a while, but he really very quickly gave up with titling the, the works. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, he simply, he did not really want to, to, to put and impose an association onto viewers. He wanted uh, us to have some free space of interpret, interpret, interpreting the works and uh, uh, and that was for that reason that he gave up with titling work. So mm -hmm. simply it's just up to us. What do we see in those paintings? And we can uh, read, uh, write the story really private and really personal to each and stick to each painting. There are some paintings in our museum that uh, provoke people to, 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 to try to interpret them. Uh, and so for that, for example, we have this really special and unique uh, last painting of his life. It is mm -hmm. really impressive and it has impressive, incredible atmosphere. It, it shows, it represents something like cross on a distracted, uh, distracted fabric. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was finished only a few hours uh, before his, his tragic death. So sometimes people, they do insist that it looks like a prophecy, like something mm -hmm. like predicting his own death. And even though we know that, that it has nothing to do with any prophecy, it's really an um, attractive way of interpreting this painting. But for example, the cathedral itself, it has uh, another story and anecdote because mm -hmm. Uh, we do remember the fire of uh, Notre Dame Cathedral in 2019. And so the day after the fire, many TV, uh, TV crews came to visit our museum and they were making films. They were making some pictures of the, the, this painting. And so they were also saying, we have to have this painting because it looks like prophecy. So 
pretty often people don't treat those paintings like some kind of prophecy. Uh, Mr. Boisje said about the building that is ahead at once, at the same time, it is really famous painting and mm -hmm. one of the finest paintings of Beksiński. And once again, people, by, by watching this painting, they often see or try to um, associate it with uh, uh, World Trade Center tragedy. So, so there are some oh. paintings that, yeah, they are, uh, they are usually uh, interpreted in, in, in a very common way. But there are some others that, you know, that, uh, that can be um, interpreted in, in very private, in very personal way. And so I think it's really good uh, not to have those titles. They wouldn't help at all. They wouldn't help at all. And yes, and we can we can have very private uh, relationship with mm -hmm. one painting. So 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 that's true actually. But we have few paintings that have their titles, like for example, really famous blue profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just oh. the name of the face, of face of an old man, and that has its, its title, Blue Profile. But yes, there are only a few examples of, of, of that. And, well, uh, in relation to that, we have another question. Do you have a favorite painting or a motif? Me? Yes. Of course, yes, I do have one painting that I like a lot and uh, mm -hmm. it is also a special one because uh, it was favorite painting of Tomek. You need to know that Tomasz, son of Zdzisław, mm -hmm. uh, already mentioned uh, journalist, he, he was also a great admirer of Beksiński's uh, uh, art and he was allowed by his father to have one, to, to, to take one painting yearly and take to his oh. own collection, yeah. And I must admit he had a great taste because usually he was he was choosing great paintings. And so he took one who, which, which has special meaning, I, I, I believe special meaning as to, to Tomek and to his life. Unfortunately, Tomek, um, after, uh, especially after uh, uh, leaving the Sanok and Beksiński together with his family, they moved to Warsaw in 1977. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, it affected with some problems, some mental problems of Tomasz, and uh, it resulted with uh, in, in 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 a number of suicide attempts, suicidal mm -hmm. suicidal attempts. So after first suicide attempt, uh, Zdzisław painted this incredible painting. It's called sometimes we call it Nevermore because mm -hmm. it shows a balloon flying away. And two wolves, two wolves yes. that are staring onto the balloon, and on the balloon we have this mo memento. I don't know how do we call, how should we call it? Nevermore. And mm -hmm. it is, I believe, me myself. I think it is at once uh, um, uh, a shout, so some request um, to to his son. And on the other side, it is also a um, fragment of. Uh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe's Raven, yes. uh, the favorite poem uh, by of Tomek, so so incredibly painted, beautiful painting, but also with some special meaning, uh, so like blink of eye to, to his son, so beautiful, and that's my favorite show. And yours? <laughs> Bajaj, maybe you go first. I have my favorite painting, but I'm talking about it all the time in the company, so <clears throat> I will go next. So I tipped my hand a little bit because the cathedral itself is one of my all-time favorites. And like I said, the fact that it combines so many things at the same time, that it takes a shape that is familiar, very familiar to anyone who um, has anything to do with basically Christianity, and at the same time builds it, at least from how I see it, builds it in a way that is very different, builds it in a, in a natural way, creating this, this idea of mystery, of something being out of place, and at the same time being something that, that we know so well. This has always been one of my favorite, favorite works of art by Zdzisław Beksiński, but to be honest, I, I couldn't, I mean, there, there, 
since I already talked about the cathedral and since I already I already kind of revealed it, I'm going to cheat a little bit and say that there are a couple of others which I always very much liked, and there is another one that creates uh, that creates this idea of one thing being another thing, and at the same time creating this atmosphere of mystery. And uh, this is it is an image of a tree, which at the same time looks a little bit like a stone. And this is a tree which has three trunks, so it suggests that maybe this is like a whole forest or maybe three trees. Uh, and at the same time, it, it it has this it has this huge and lush canopy. But as you keep looking at the canopy, it turns out that that it is made of something that is that is is not made of leaves. Again, the mystery of what is this image exactly? How it was created? How it came to be? Did it grew naturally? And what what does it mean for us? The atmosphere, the when you look at it and you see that it is shaded under the canopy. And this, 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 the color of this shade suggests that there is some light seeping through, but it is filtered through something we cannot see, and the and it changes the color. And basically, it's one of those images which, at the same time, are inviting because you want to enter and explore. You'd like to see it from different perspectives and try to find out the meaning, but on, at the same time, it is. Um, it is an image that is also, probably as most of them, somewhat, um, somewhat disturbing, somewhat difficult to process. So maybe it's better viewed from a certain distance. Maybe it's better that we are not in there. And since it creates so much, at least for me at the same time, it is one that is also very interesting to me and one that I always remember, one I always think about when I think about uh, when when Zdzisław Bekszyński appears as a topic or when we look at other uh, other images or, or when we talk about his art? For me, uh, my favorite Bekszyński, Bekszyński's painting is actually the first one I've ever seen. I was 10 years old, I believe, 10, maybe 9, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And I was reading a book. I don't remember its name or what it was about. And being honest, I don't really care. But um, there was a, a Kszynski's painting on this book on the cover. I'm calling it Red Mountain. I don't think it's the real title. I don't think this uh, painting has a title. But it is in the museum. I have a photo of it because I was in the museum many, many times. And I love it. I mean, it's absolutely spectacular colors, different shades of red there and the sky. And there are no people there. There are no creatures there. It's like very simple painting. It's just a big um, red mountain in the center, I think, with some rocks and hills at the, like, uh, four, uh, four, um, in the front. And there is, like, this simple circle shape in the mountain. And this is it. And I absolutely adore this painting. And I'm looking at it, and I don't really have any thoughts or dialogue as, I, as I'm as i having sometimes when looking at Bekszyński paintings. I just have a lot of emotions, which I really cannot explain, but it's touching something. I mean, it's incredible. And after that, I just knew I need to know who this guy is, and I want to see more of his paintings. So... Yeah, after that, uh, we went on, uh, because I was really annoying kid. I'm still annoying, but then I was even more. And I just was, uh, like, talking to my parents, who's that? And they told me about Bekszyński, and then told me about museum. And it was their mistake, because after they told me there is a Bekszyński's museum, well, we needed to go. <laughs> so, right. Sanok, uh, and yeah. Uh, I'm I'm so so happy I could see it uh, live because actually there's something you said like uh, earlier, Mr. Serafin, that those paintings uh, on like in a physical form they are even more incredible because you can see the strokes of paint on many of them and it's also make a big impression impression in my in my opinion it's it's incredible. And the second one, because I'm also a cheater, as you, Boże, and I will t tell you about the second um, painting I really like, 
is the painting on which actually I have it uh, in the background on a magnet. I can actually show you this painting. It's, I don't know if you can see it. It's also oh, in the museum. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a painting with like stone pillars, many, many stone pillars. And on each, they are like from the, the pit of darkness, they're emerging. And on top of each uh, stone column, there are like few people sitting around the fireplace. A fireplace, I think you can, not a fireplace, but around the fire. And I don't know, it also speaks to me. It's like, it's sad, but in the same way, it's just... Yes, and it's, I, I, have, to, I have to say one thing, it became, lately it became viral, because mm. some people, yeah, they do believe it's a great commentary to, to the oh, pandemic and all the yes. social results of pandemic, because, yeah, it's the isolation of people who, yeah, who are like left on their own on those pillars that there's like lack of relationship between yeah. uh, groups so great print painting and, and, and lately yeah, we I spoke to one old lady she in 1974 she bought one Beksiński completely mm -hmm. different but she was about to buy that one but she said she wouldn't like it so she chose another one <laughs> I think she made a mistake that was way better. Yeah. Yes, that's true. But this is a really good commentary and this is something uh, this is something we also talk about that there have so many interpretations so they really good for different occasions. I mean for different states of mind which is also amazing. Yes, that's true. Absolutely agree. And I have like I promise this is the last question about Bakshinsky. Um, I believe that museum not only have his paintings and uh, sculptures and his sketches, um, but also you have some kind of a replica of his studio, right? Yes, yes. Actually, everything that you can see in uh, within the studio comes from his uh, from, mm -hmm. from his apartment. Yeah. So 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 everything's original actually. Uh, especially the collection of CDs, which was pretty huge because it's over 1,400 CDs with classic music. With yeah, he, mm -hmm. he, he usually he was usually listening to music while painting. So he was not only great, I mean, lover, but also great connoisseur of classic music. It was his biggest love of his life. Actually, was music. He was just not that brave to compose, but he tried to. He tried. He composed. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know. And yeah, but it's nothing really I would recommend. He also tried to write. So, yeah, a few years ago, novels by Bekczynski, they, they were released by, yeah. Oh. So, yes, yes. So he was uh, uh, versatile, as we said. So, so, so many, mm -hmm. so many um, um, uh, branches of art, so many um, um, activities he was involved in. So, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so but we have some 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 really special things and some special uh, artifacts in our museum. The one the one that I love the most is surely first painting of Bekczynski. He was not even two years old, Ooh. small toddler, and his mother gave him pencil and and uh, sheet of paper, so he started to 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 to. <laughs> to paint his mother and father, and that's first work by Bekczynski. So we wow. have not only the last painting, but also first work. So we can follow his uh, ar uh, his artistic development from the very beginning to uh, until the last moment of his life. And uh, yeah, there are some 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 points that you should not skip definitely. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean. Um, the reconstruction of his studio, it tells a lot about Bekczynski because yeah. we need to know that he was a very modest and very shy, very kind man. So in uh, the middle of 80s, we may say he belonged to the most, to the richest Poles, surely, um, after signing contract with Mr. Dmachowski. And yet he did not really feel like uh, expanding his studio or working in luxury uh, uh, circumstances, nothing at all. He was just about interested in art, in painting. I mean, and that's why I said 
his art is really filled with authenticity. Yeah, it was yeah, all about creation, true. and that was everything that 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 really mattered mattered for to, to him. Gentlemen, it was really, really amazing that we could talk about Stisław Bekszyński and his work and about the uh, designing of uh, Nightmare Cathedral. Uh, I'm very, very happy that we could work on this and I believe this will be, this is an amazing, amazing project. So thank you very much, both of you. Thank you, Błażej. Thank, thank you, Mr. Serafin. I'm really happy that you could join us and uh, share the knowledge about Bekszyński and I I would love to hear even more. Uh, I mean, it was really amazing. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you guys for listening to us. And I think this is it. And uh, well, pretty soon we have other uh, amazing stream streams ready for you. So see you soon. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.